Hi guys, welcome to Hampshire Outdoors of Survival. It's January, this is my first video of the new year. So we're going out here. Um, as I've said to you guys in the past, you want me to show you something, I'll show it to you. So what I got asked for this week was friction fires. So I'm going to do a video on friction fires, um, demonstrate to you some methods, techniques and that, and some reasoning. Um, Hopefully it's not going to be too long with winded for you. Hopefully it's not going to be too boring. Hang on to the end or skip to the end if you're impatient and I'll update you on the 500 subscriber giveaway. Anyhow, first things first, let's get a brew on. Um, get out of the woods. First priority every time is get the brew on. So anyhow, back to the little bush box because it's quick, it's efficient, it's easy and I like it. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a brew on this and then we'll get into some friction fire. Um, fire lighting system today, we're going to go quick and easy, we're going to go with a cigarette lighter, um, a packet of crisps and uh, I'll probably throw in a cotton bud or two. A packet of crisps you say? Yeah, a packet of crisps. Potato, carbohydrate, okay, uh, and then you've got the oils. And you can all try this at home. Take a potato crisp, take a cigarette lighter, light it. Look at that. That might be a new fire lighting aid to some of you, but a potato crisp. It makes an excellent fire lighter. And place that in my fire. And uh, from there. We'll place some kindling on. In fact, we'll put some more crisps on. Did I smother it? Did I smother it? Oh, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. Go with a little bit of silver birch as well. So we like a little bit of silver birch. So yeah, there's a bit of an urban survival tip to you. You can use potato crisps in a survival situation as a fire starter. Um, done it loads of times in the past. It's one of those that quite often when you show people they're quite surprised. I'm trying to load the, the firebox on this side purely and simply because it means you can watch it. Trying to overload it, let that get going. And then the bonus is you can eat the rest of the crisps. Or you can roll them up, keep them dry, put them away as a fire lighting aid for future situations. So, we'll let that get going. In fact, in the brilliance that this little box is, it's already getting going. So, yeah, as we keep saying, or I keep saying, it's a cheap one from Amazon. Don't necessarily need to buy the super expensive ones. It's good. It does what it says on the tin. It will get a fire going. Right. Cat on. larger pieces on there because I want this to ball up my brute and not burn out. Okie doke. Right, so before we get into friction fire lighting we're going to cover some basics. Friction fire lighting. It's a, it's a good survival method. It's a skill worth having. Um, it's something worth practicing. I would say to you all, go out, give it a go, practice it. Um, 
there's a lot of mysticism behind it there's a lot of all oh, you know you've got to be really skillful to do this well you get skills through practice so at the end of the day give it a go put it in your toolbox I don't carry it as a, as a primary system the reason I don't carry it as a primary system there are too many ways for it to fail you it does have a place in survival it doesn't have much of a place in my kit it's an absolute dire last minute go-to um, as I said to you guys before now bushcraft is, is about learning skills in my book and survival is about dealing with situations and bow saw or friction fires are not one of my go-to's for lighting a fire always the cigarette lighter first and then go through your three or four other simple methods that back you up so it can be ferrocean rod it can be chemical fire they're quick they're efficient they very rarely let you down and they take the minimum of resources and efforts to use bow saw has a downside in the fact that it takes calories to do it and you've got to have the right conditions so when we're getting on to conditions i will take you for a walk and we will have a look at the conditions here and i'll explain some bits hopefully i've got that on camera but that is the standing conditions in the woods where i am today we've had a lot of moisture we've had a lot of rain and even on standing wood we got moisture and when you're trying to do a bow saw fire your biggest enemy is moisture um, it's going to reduce your ability to get that fire going drastically um, then you've got to think about your tinders and you're making a fire from an ember so if your tinders aren't good yeah you're really going to struggle with it but today i'm going to endeavor um, to make a, a, a bow and produce fire in the woods with materials that i've harvested from the woods and then i'm going to give you an alternative so let's go with that coffee white two sugars instant it's because when i'm out here it's what i like it's quick it's easy and it's efficient and i always take my rubbish home with me At home i like my uh, coffee bags or a filter coffee when well, jace is out here we make camp coffee why? Because it's nice. Oh. Cheers, guys. Right, guys. Bow. So, first part of your fire is going to be your bow. So, ideally, you want a piece of green wood doesn't have to be perfectly straight doesn't have to be a, a perfect bow shape what does need to be ideally is green or at least reasonably flexible and I've chosen this piece because it's got a bit of a natural arch in it and in having a natural arch in it it means it's going to make life a little bit easier for me forming the bow so the string will come from here to here okay that will form up my bow many methods of tying it everybody finds their own you find what's efficient and works for you but ideally a bit of 550 paracord works well in an emergency a boot lace so you you can go with whatever method you want you can loop it you can tie it whatever you use basically you don't want the rope pulling up the stick you want to make sure that it's going to be in there so one of the methods Remember to keep your knife under control at all times. So I form a notch like that.
done. I formed a loop here. I'm winding this tightly round here. And I'm going to take it back under itself here. over and through that loop. And then I'm going to pull the loose end there and that's not going to go anywhere. This end I'm going to come up through the notch and I'm going to whip it back for two or three inches and then I'm going to whip back over itself loosely and ideally I'd keep going with that until such times I've finished. I'm now going to twist the line over he says he says twist the line over and pull it on itself and then you can just finish off with simple overhand hitch and again reason we use hitches quite simple you don't want to waste your materials you don't have to throw it away and I think that's the end I'm probably going to handle this from so what I'll do is I'll hank that up so it hangs out the way Again, this is going to be a lot of movement going on here, so I don't want this waving around too much, getting in the way. Very simple bow, okay? That's my bow. Now, in trying to find some dry wood, It's very difficult up here. So this is going to be my drill. All right, it's a little bit long and it's got bark on it. And already as you can see, if I lift the bark off, underneath that, it's moist or damp. So I'm going to stoke my fire up again, to give myself a little bit of a help. And bear in mind, I've already got a fire take the bark off so why would you be lighting a fire if you already had a fire you wouldn't but if you already had a fire and you had no other method this is something you could be doing in preparation through the night tonight so that you have something to carry with you tomorrow if you're moving Go for my spindle. Again there. Not as arty as some that I've seen. Again that will form my spindle. And this is going to form the tip of my bow. This is the piece we're going to burn into the piece of timber and use to create the friction. So, I'll move that just so you can see. That, I don't want in the flames, okay? But I do want heat on it. I want that to dry as much as possible. So I'll put that, let's see how we're gonna do this. I might do 
bit of widget on top of that. Pick the kettle. We fired the kit. Get some sticks. Oh yeah, that'll do. So it's not in the flames, but it's in heat. So hopefully what I'm doing is evaporating some of the moisture off of it. And this is gonna be my bed. Um, it's a bit of silver birch. It's fairly dry. I've had it in the car. And so what we're gonna do, have a look at this. Come in, I normally say at least half of my bow. I don't want to be too close to the edge. In fact, that edge looks a bit brittle. So it's come back to here. So you look at the, the, the size of this, and I want to come back about half again. And you want to make a reasonable divot that the head of that bow is going to sit into. Because you're going to have to control this when it's spinning. As I say, this could be prepared in a camp. If you're preparing to move, this could be sorted out and prepared at home. If you're going out to practice these skills. Let's put that back on there to dry up some more. So normally, in a perfect situation, I would be placing my foot on this, kneeling over it and doing the bow saw on that. Because I want to film it and get it into a decent position um, for you guys to be able to see what I'm actually doing. I brought a clamp in with me. So I'm actually going to clamp this piece of wood down so it doesn't move. Obviously you wouldn't have this in a real situation. But in the summer, we'll go into this in a bit more detail and I'll show you how it's done on the ground. So there's my piece of wood. It's nice and warm, it's starting to dry out. And you can see that it's dead. It's got a little bit of worm rot in it, so hopefully that's not gonna cause it to collapse on me. The next thing I need... Okay, so here's a little bit of wood I preferred prepared earlier. That's gonna be my bearing, the top. This is gonna sit in here, like that be rotated like that and the bearing will sit on the top and I'll put pressure on the bearing. So I'm actually going to shave that tip down a little bit more. your bow and if you're lucky you've got the stretch and the string right if you're unlucky like I am it's a bit of a fiddle the first time twist it over and pull it back on itself tension on that, it's a little bit too much, but rather too much and too little, and the cordage will stretch. Right, so there we have the bow set, that sits in the divot, bearing block on the top which I've spat on, 
So the first few goes, you want to go slowly to start bedding. That squeaking you can hear is moisture. This is my friend. And as you can see, we're starting to bed. Set out the bearing block. Slipped out the bearing block again. Uh, it's not easy doing it up at this height, to be honest with you. What I'm going to do, I'm going to actually put a bit more of a tip on that. And the reason being, it's a bit uneven, and it's throwing my method off and I'm going to take my top off because I'm starting to get warm <sighs> let's pull my bow back get that out of the way otherwise it's just going to get caught up bit into your bearing block because obviously you're putting pressure down on that and on we go Whew. again not enough downward pressure And to be honest with you, my spindle is probably a little bit too long. It would probably help that if it was a bit shorter. But again, I'm trying to demonstrate why this isn't my survival method. Let's go again. This is difficult to do, <laughs> standing up, it really is. <sighs> right, so back to the bow drill. So what I've done, I've shortened the staff up, or the, the drill itself up. Um, it's got a bit of a knot here, so I'm going to take this knot off and try and smooth it out and I've shortened it down. Just put a little curve on the end there. And we'll give that a try, see how that works. So what we do, Take the bow up, place the bow in. Oh yeah, that works better. And the knack is to try and get a full draw on the bow. Again, let's try it the other way around. 
and I'm not making this look difficult for the camera it is genuinely difficult especially when you're working at this angle Stove out of the way. Bit of ash everywhere, that wasn't snow. Let's try a different angle. As you see. It's a nightmare, it's a ball's ache, and this is just not heating. It's not getting warm enough. I'm not getting the friction that I need in there. The other thing is it's squeaking. That squeaking is indicative of moisture. So there's moisture in the, in the drill. There's moisture in that wood, which is gonna make it really, really difficult. And I could keep going with this all day. Uh, so what we'll do, so, let's go back to fire. Okie doke fire. So we're not going to go with the bow drill. So what are we going to go with? What's going to work for us? Let's try some different techniques. Let's go to my bag. What do I carry in my bag? What do I carry in my kit? So ferrous CM rod. First backup. This is after cigarette lighter. So first backup after cigarette lighter. Bit of birch bark. You want the birch bark dry. So you get it, you harvest it, you keep it dry, or you find a piece of birch bark on a part of a tree that is relatively dry. If you have to take the outer layer off, take the outer layer off. You want to get to the orange layer underneath, put some scrapings into it, take a ferrocium rod. And we have fire. Okay, so there, that's first backup. Okay, I can light fire with that. That took. No more than 30 seconds. Okay. So, go to the next backup. Bit of char cloth and a ferrocium rod. No time at all. Easy. So that's ferrocium rods. So you say that's fine, that's ferrocium rod, Mick. What if I don't have a ferrocium rod? Well, if you don't have a ferrocium rod, dig around in your kit. What we're going to have as a backup, we could go chemical fire, potassium permagnate. And I know I'm saying it wrong, but uh, for some reason over the years, I've struggled with it. It's just one of those words, can't seem to get it through my head, how to say it properly. So, potassium, permanganate. Let's make a little dip in the top of that. A little bit of glycerin. Give it a little bit of a stir. Take your fingers away, sit back and wait. It's a slow chemical reaction, it does take a little bit of time. Potassium permanganate and glycerin. Okay, also works with brake fluid. Also works with sugar. If you combine it with sugar, grind the two into a powder. That will be a powder that will combust. Right, so there. Now we have what there? We have cigarette, cigarette lighter primary, ferrocium rod secondary, chemical fire. Um, and the 
course you're all right this one. flint steel. Those are my go-to's. So friction fire. Yep, for a friction fire today has been a complete failure. If I persevered with it long enough, it would probably work. I could probably get a fire going. But in the time that it took me to make the bow and set the wood, I've produced for you one, two, three, four, five types of fire. Okay. Survival is about preparation, and that's why my channel is called Hampshire Outdoors of Survival. I'm not trying to be a survival guru or anything like that. I'm trying to show people techniques that are quick, efficient, and will work and won't let you down. The reason I use these techniques is because I found they work for me. It's the reason I also didn't call my channel a bushcrafting channel. If you want to do bushcrafting, and bushcrafting skills are essential, they're great, learn them. Bow drill, learn it. Hand drill, if you can master it, learn it. They're good techniques, I won't, won't say they're not, okay? Are they what I would go to in a survival situation? No. And the reason that I wouldn't have to go to it is because I do prepare. I do have kits with me. I do carry stuff with me. I don't carry one cigarette lighter, I carry many. I've always got one in my pocket. I've always got two or three in the car. Um, if I'm going out, I take a fire kit with me so that I've got kit to start a fire. It goes in the back of a little 20 litre bright purple day sack that I carry, okay? At the end of the day, it doesn't shout to the world, look what he's got, but I also carry a first aid kit. So I carry enough kit to deal with any situation that comes up. The art of survival is about having the skill set and the mindset. 
to get through it. It's, and in having that means you also carry the tools with you that enable you to survive the situation. Am I a prepper? I suppose I am. Eh? Do I believe in preparedness? Yes, definitely. And so do most of you. People sit there and say to me, I'm not a prepper, I'm not a prepper. You've got a first aid kit, haven't you? You've got a first aid kit at home, you've got a medicine cabinet, you keep some medicines in it. Well, if that ain't prepping, I don't know what is. Okay? Don't have to go to extremes. No, I haven't got loads of ammunition. No, I haven't got loads of explosives. No, I haven't got 25 years worth of dried food that will survive anything. But at the end of the day, right, I've got a couple of days worth of food put by or a couple of weeks worth of tins put by, just in case. I've got some tin soup. I've got stuff I don't necessarily like, but I've got it in the cabinet and go there, it comes to. I've got a couple of packs of pasta. It's a fallback, okay? It's a form of prepping. So there we go. I'm sorry the bow drill was a failure today, but again, that comes down to conditions and climate. And also the fact that I'm trying to do it up off the floor. You don't want any moisture, any moisture at all. It can even be down to dew point that will slow this down and make it a difficult process. Whereas the other techniques, as you saw, they all work. Go with those, okay? I will come back to a friction fire. I'll come back to friction fire when the situation suits in the summer. If you live in a hot, dry climate, friction fire is your friend. Go to it use it, practice it, it will work for you in those environments. In the UK, no, use it in the summer. And I guarantee you there will be somebody out there in the next couple of weeks doing friction fire in the winter. Okay? Yeah, fine. Do it. But I almost guarantee you, their woods and their materials, they will be dried. They will have kept them dry. The other thing is, if I'm carrying my kit out with me, and that is my basic fire starting kit there which is probably a tennis ball size goes in the bottom of my bag not a problem if I've got to start carrying all this and keeping it as dry as I can and if I'm going to do it properly and carry it carrying the bow as well and keep that efficient and working that's not really helping is it so anyhow I hope that it's not been too negative a video. I hope uh, you've all enjoyed it. I hope I've shown you a couple of tricks and a couple of ideas. Um, again, flint and steel, it's not a primary method, but you saw it works. That's on a damp day out here. And yes, the hay I've got's in a bag. It's the same bag I used two months ago to do another video. It's open and all it's been is turned over like that and pulled upside down and it's sat outside in the plastic bag. In actual fact, that's all damp there. But I'm still able to get a fire going with it. Okay. Um, so, it's about tinder, it's about having materials. Oh, and in the kit, because I'm not an out and out survivalist, fire gels. Got one of those in there because if it's a genuine emergency, I really want to get a fire going. That's what I'll go to. Cotton wool balls, I carry those as well. A little bit of Vaseline, cotton wool ball, you'll start a fire in almost any situation. This has been Hampshire Outdoors and Survival. This has been Mick. I hope you've had a wonderful Christmas. I hope you've had a glorious new year. I hope you're not too hungover. Um, here's looking at the new new year and moving on. 500 subscriber giveaway. Okay, so that's a complete cook set um, for two. So it consists of one 800 mil pan, one 200, uh, one 800 mil pan, 1000 mil pan. Um, it, so they both come with lids that double up as bowls. Two cups, stainless steel, two foldable knife fork spoon sets, and a little gas stove, and it all packs away into one. And also the Heikman spirit stove. I haven't got them with me today out here to show you. I do apologize for that. So when we get to 500 subscribers, two of you will get picked out. You'll each one win one of those prizes. So one of you will get the stove, uh, and one of you will get the cook set with the gas stove. The other one will get the meth stove. Um, guys, I'm going to get Kaz to draw the names out this time, and um, yeah, we'll we'll go with that. And what can I say? That's Mick doing foreign survival. Mick out.